I was not ready for what I found in this box. And I'm not talking about the AI. My expectation was this was just another B-Link mini PC with a beefier CPU. But nope, totally different. The first very noticeable change is size. The GTI 14 Ultra is a substantially bigger mini PC than its lower end cousin. Okay, cool. So why the enlargement? Well, we're looking at another mini PC with an inbuilt power supply. And when I complain about large power bricks being bundled with mini PCs, I never thought we'd end up going in this direction. And that's not all. There's a lot more here not found in your average mini PC, and we'll take a gander at it right after this message. The Ezus Rec Experts Screen Recorder is an all-in-one solution for recording everything on your screen, whether it's online meetings, gameplay, tutorials, and more. Rec Expert supports 4K and 60fps in various video formats, and there are plenty of additional features, including a simple video editor to clean up your recording. Give it a test run with the link in the video description. So B-Link's GTI 14 Ultra is bigger with an inbuilt 145 watt power supply. Some will fist pump this decision, while others will face palm, depending on your preference. Call me old fashioned, but I like as many user replaceable parts as possible. Anyway, it's all housed in this nicely Mac Mini inspired metal case and is well put together. The GTI 14 Ultra is available in two Intel CPU flavors, the Core 7 and Core 9 Ultra. The difference between them is price and clock speeds. Both have 16 cores made up of 6 P cores, 8 E cores, as well as two low power E cores with a total of 22 threads. Both also feature the same flagship Intel Arc graphics. This Core 7 Ultra 155H model can be found for $850 US after the coupon on Amazon.com and includes 32GB of DDR5-5600 and a 1TB SSD. You won't find much in the box, just a power cord, HDMI and manual. This is the first mini PC I've come across with wide speakers inside, but there's also a microphone array allowing for audio conferencing, recording and voice recognition. It's also nice to see a full-sized SD card slot for those wanting a video editing workstation. Both USB ports are 10 gigabit and the USB-C is data only. The power button has a fingerprint sensor if you want to use the fingerprint lock function in Windows. I tried it and it worked really well. Pretty much instant recognition. On the back of the mini are another four USB 3 10 gigabit a USB-C Thunderbolt 4, which supports power delivery and display, HDMI, and DisplayPort. HDMI maxes out at 4K60, while the DisplayPort and USB-C can do higher refresh rates and resolutions. You can have a total of three displays natively with this mini. You might have also noticed there's a 3.5mm audio jack on both sides, which is something B-Link has been including on the high-end units. Dual Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN is used for wired networking, and this is the first Mini I've tested to include Intel's Wi-Fi 7 BE200, which didn't even show up on the ASUS NUC 14 Pro Plus. Bluetooth range is really good. The GTI 14 Ultra takes the top spot when testing my Bluetooth audio speaker for uninterrupted playback without artifacts. It does decently with a Wi-Fi test at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Only a few network connection pop-ups during the game session, which resulted in some higher pings. But since other minis have passed this test without any issues, it doesn't get a pass. B-Link's inbuilt speakers aren't anything amazing. There's no bass of course, but the trebles and mids aren't as tinny as you hear on most monitors. So that's a positive. They're also pretty loud at maximum volume, although they can start to distort. Overall, the speakers are a decent inclusion. B-Link says the microphone has 360 degree voice recognition at 5 meters. So, let's test that claim. Okay, I'm standing 5 meters away. Why does Microsoft suck so much? Great, it worked. Seems Microsoft didn't like what I had to say. There's another important exclusive feature I need to show you, which is hidden inside. Unfortunately, B-Link hasn't made this mini easy to open, thanks to these horrible rubber screw covers you need to pluck out first, like an eyeball. Not that I have experience, but I imagine it would be something like this. Once they're removed, you can finally unscrew the lid, 
and there are four screws on the dust filter. What we're in for next, just to get access to RAM and storage, is frankly, BS. But before that, I wanted to point out the full PCIe slot for a discrete graphics card. This is a Gen 4 X8 slot, which is the same bandwidth as a Gen 3 X16. B-Link is releasing a docking station you can use for this mini and a discrete GPU. They're sending me the dock later, so I'll cover this cool feature in a separate video. Okay, now to get to the memory and storage. The speaker and power supply need to be removed, and they have cables and ribbons attached to them, so be careful and keep track of your screws. Different ones are used all over the place. Okay, four screws for the speaker, then four screws for the power supply. Wrestle them out, and then they can dangle like these nuts. For the power supply, you'll need to lift the cable attached to it, then we just need to remove the middle plate. Three screws, and I hope you have a proper screwdriver kit, because you also need to remove one hex standoff. Then wrestle with the plate to get it loose, and you finally, finally have access to the memory and storage. There's an additional 2280 M.2 Gen 4 slot for extra storage above the Wi-Fi 7 card. Finally, I want to point out there's a PCIe X1 slot, which I'll also cover in the next video. Windows 11 Pro is included, and there was no malware found on the pre-installed OS. For the Ubuntu test, I even checked the internal speakers and microphone were working, along with the usual. Everything is fine, including the Wi-Fi 7 chip. Intel's new Media Lake chips don't have the single core edge like they did with the previous two generations. And the Ultra 7 falls behind some of AMD's latest and greatest, and even some of the previous gen Intel processors in Cinebench. That being said, there's a marginal improvement over the Core Ultra 5. Multicore sees a more substantial increase over the 5, with around 8%. By default, the GTI 14 Ultra is set to 54W mode in the BIOS, but you can increase it to 65W. That gains an extra 9% and is still 7% ahead of the Core Ultra 5. On to Geekbench. Upping the power limit on the GTI 14 Ultra didn't result in better single core score, but multi-core did benefit and there's a good increase with a higher power limit. B-Link's latest is around the same spot on the chart in H.264 video encoding as it was in Cinebench. And it does well in AV1, matching the top AMD Ryzen results at 65W mode. If you prefer to use the iGPU for video encoding, then Intel's CPUs are at the top. And then you get 3 Mark scores showing Intel's optimization team working overtime to take the top spots, and then failing against AMD in actual games. Still, this Core Ultra 7 is performing just as well as the Ultra 9 I tested in both DX11 and DX12. There's a slight win in Steel Nomad Lite, and 8% better against the best Core Ultra 5 result. So the takeaway here being a single digit percentage point improvement in CPU and graphics over the Core Ultra 5 in these benchmarks. The same crucial P3 Plus drive is included as we've seen in other B-Link minis. The sequential read and write speeds are definitely Gen 4, but nothing impressive. It's a decent SSD. Let's test some games. In most cases, there's a noticeable improvement, but not always. Have my orders. With the AAA games, there's an easy to spot 10 to 15% improvement in FPS.
Emulation, unfortunately, doesn't see much benefit. Obviously, the best way to game is using the PCIe slot, but for this video, I tested the Thunderbolt 4 port just to make sure it's working. Here it is with an RTX 3070. A full-sized SD card slot makes the B-Link GTI 14 Ultra an even nicer video editing workstation, and its 4K Adobe Premiere performance is nice and snappy. To increase the power limit in the BIOS, head to Advanced, Power and Performance, Config TDP Configurations, and select 65 watts. In PCH IO configuration, you can change the state after G3. Fan speed curve config is self explanatory. There's wake system from S5, and that's about it. Okay, we need to go over power draw, as there are some issues with the GTI 14 Ultra. Thanks to Scott Ron for alerting me on our mini PC Discord, which you can join in the video description. When the mini is first plugged in, it constantly draws just over 2 watts doing nothing. However, if you boot into Windows and then shut down, it'll start using just over 8 watts. That's a lot. It's enough to make the mini PC case start to go above ambient temperature from doing absolutely nothing. B-Link's fix is to turn off fast startup in Windows in the power options. And this does bring the power draw down back to over 2 watts, which isn't great, but a big improvement. So that's the power draw when it's shut off. How about when it's idling in Windows doing nothing at all? Well, here it is. 31 watts when idle. More than double the worst result in this stack, which is the B-Link C14. So, that made me curious. Is it the inbuilt power supply or the board? So I hooked up my USB-C monitor, and at idle, it chugged 50 watts. The monitor by itself only takes 19. That's 31 watts again. So it's not the inbuilt power supply, maybe the board. And I don't know if this can be fixed with a BIOS update or not. The idle power draw doesn't affect the maximum, which is in line with what this mini should be doing. It also depends on the power mode you end up going with. And that also affects the maximum CPU temperature, which holds up okay. What's really impressive with B-Link's new line of mini PCs is the lack of fan noise. The GTI 14 Ultra is the most impressive mini yet beating everything I've tested in the mid to high end, and even beating a bunch of budget minis which use one third the power and have much less heat to deal with. Very impressive. Maximum SSD temp showed as 63 on both temperature sensors. Okay, now let's go over the pros and cons. B-Link's GTI 14 Ultra has a large feature set that's never been done in a similar combination. Inbuilt power supply, speakers, fingerprint sensor, quad array microphone, a full PCIe X8 slot, full size SD card slot, Wi-Fi 7, dual 2.5 gigabit LAN, and dual audio jacks. A crazy amount of stuff in one mini PC. It's impressively quiet whether you use the mini in its default power limit or 65 watt mode. The metal case returns, and it's still a nice looking mini with good build quality. Obviously the biggest problem we've touched upon is the excessive power draw when the mini is shut off or idling. One is fixable, the other probably not. I'd also have preferred an external power brick and a smaller mini, but maybe you don't. And as we've seen before, Intel's Arc integrated graphics doesn't hold up against AMD's best. Also getting to the memory and storage is a pain in the ass. B-Link's GTI 14 Ultra is a cool, unique mini PC that caters to those wanting a mini that does everything. AI, video editing, gaming, or networking. It's got the hardware for many usage cases. Ultimately, a lot of owners may be paying for stuff they might never use. But if you want one mini that does practically everything, then this is definitely it. The Gen 4 XA PCIe slot will even give gamers the best experience when paired with a discrete graphics card. That video will come later, but in the meantime, if you want a similar mini PC without so many features and a lower price, 
then check out my review of the Beeling C14 right here. Cheers!